Welcome to Paw Paw's Workshop. For the longest time, I have wanted to make a center finder. This is a very simple tool that helps to find the center of any circle. And for the longest time, I have used speed squares, framing squares, all types of different ways to be able to find the center. Well, today I made this very simple tool to be able to do that and this is going to be a nice addition to the shop. So let's get started today and I want to show you how I did it. Now I've been wanting to make a center finder to be able to find the center of the circles down for quite a while. And so I decided to do it today. And it's really very simple. And all I'm gonna do is just open up a new window in Easel, and I'm gonna click on the rectangle box up top, and I'm gonna to change the shape of this now. Okay, now I have the first one that's one inch wide, six inches long. I'm gonna hit Control C and Control V, and I'm gonna do that twice, because I'm gonna need three of them. Now the next thing I'm going to do is position that one right down here for now. I'm going to grab the second one and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So that's done. We'll slide it down to this position. And I want to make this 5 inches long, not 6. And the reason being when these are joined together, it'll be 6 inches this way and it will be 6 inches this direction. To be able to join these exactly where I want to do it, I'm going to go back to this first one. And I'm going to use this point right here and position it exactly on this point. So to do that, we're going to go right up here and select the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to put the coordinates in. And on the X axis, that's going to be 2. And then on the y-axis, that is going to be 1. And now, that positions that exactly right here. Now then, I want this to come over here and put this exactly into here. So to do that, same thing, I'm going to select my point, And I need to have my x-axis at 2. And my y-axis at 1 and that positions that exactly where it needs to be. So that's a very precise way of being able to do it. Now what I want to do is go ahead and combine this together. So now this is one unit. So that's what I wanted to be able to do. The next thing I want to do to be able to make it real simple is I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. And then I'm going to position this where this axis is exactly on the 5. To be able to do that, the simplest way to do that, since I've rotated this, is I'm just going to select the center, because that's going to give it right on that center axis, and I'm going to select on my x-axis for 5. And that's really all I need to do. That's now positioned exactly in line with this. So now I'm going to take this one and slide it over and put it in position. Where do I want that? I want that position now where along this line is going to be on the 5. So I'm going to select my bottom right hand corner and I want to be able to select on the x-axis 5. That moves it exactly over where it needs to be. So that is now my perfect 45 degree angle and it's directly along this axis. Now the next thing I want to do before I go any further is I want to do control V one more time with one more piece and I'll show you that in a second. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and combine all of this together. So I've highlighted it all, select combine, and now this is all one unit. 
The next thing I want to do, I want to cut this on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and select cut. And this I want to be able to cut on the outside. So there we have the basic parameter for my center finder. Now I'm going to rotate this now back and put this piece in. But one thing I want, I don't want this to be in this position. So I want to be able to have it where it cuts off at a 45 degree angle. The easiest way to get to 45 degree angle is to create another box. We'll bring this over here and we will rotate that box 45 degrees. All right, and we're going to put the cut depth at zero. Then we'll slide that right up there and we'll combine this together and that will make my 45 degree piece that I need just like that. Now since we've moved since we were moving this around I want to be able to go ahead and put this back exactly where it needs to be. I'm going to put this back right on my five again. So I'm going to put this in the center. I'm going to put this at my five. And that's really all I need to care about right now is my x-axis. And then I'm going to take this piece and I want to slide it right over into here. And again, I'm going to put this on this side. I want to add to five. And now that's exactly where it needs to be. Now from there, I want to change the depth of this. I want to be able to cut this on uh, an eighth of an inch down. So that is going to be at 0.125. And I want this portion to cut full depth. And the full depth of this is a quarter of an inch. So there is my center finder right there. Now the next thing I want to be able to do is take this and rotate it. So I can grab this, rotate it right around, and actually the easiest way is just go ahead and type this in 315 degrees and now it's exactly where it needs to be. So let's take this and slide it right down. Now this is almost right to that point the way it's cutting. So I think what I'm going to do you just extend this just a little bit further to right to that point. And I think that will be good. And if you look at the preview over here, let's zoom in. And that's looking real good. Okay, there are my four tabs. I'm going to leave that one right there. That's a good spot. This is a good spot. But this one right down in the corner is not. So i got to be able to select that tab. And I'm just going to slide it right around here and we'll put it in this position. So now we're ready to be able to carve. Now I went ahead and just secured this scrap piece down. Now in this in the computer it was 8 by 8 and this is larger than that. Doesn't really matter. This is actually 9 inches by, oh gosh, over 2 feet long. Actually over 3 feet long. Like I said, it doesn't matter because I want to cut right in this area. As far as my XY home position, I'm going to leave it down here in the corner, but I'm actually going to put it somewhere in this vicinity. Again, it doesn't really matter because I have more material than I need. So let's go ahead and carve this. I'm using my XY zero point right here, and this is roughly an inch up from the bottom and about a half inch over from the other side. Again, this does not have to be exact. Now I'm using a sixteenth of an inch upcut bit to be able to carve this out. Now quite frankly I could have used an eighth inch bit, but the sixteenth was in the machine and I just left it. Now I'm carving this at 80 inches per minute and it's cutting very very smoothly and quite frankly it's doing an excellent job. I want to show a close up of this bit cutting out the pocket. And if you look closely, that pocket is completely, totally clean and no lines at all. This is, I don't even need to sand it. Now that the carving is done, I can use the jog uh, machine commands and just move that out of the way. 
Now it's time to remove the project off of the table. And the, really the only thing that I'm going to need to do is just cut the tabs and free it from the uh, scrap board. And then from there, maybe just a little bit of light sanding on the edge and the project is done. And you can see just brushing off the sawdust and it looks really, really good. Now this is a very simple tool. It just consists of a 90 degree angle with the 45 degrees here. And it made on the back side so that this has a notch and this fits right into where the circle is. And that allows you to build a mark to center every time. So very, very simple, easy to make. Now I made this one on a CNC machine, but you could do this certainly with a jigsaw and just a few simple layout tools to be able to do it. Now I went ahead and I put this dowel rod into the vise so I could be able to have two hands free because I wanted to show you this really simple device. This is made so that the circle that you're going to be measuring just slides right into here and it has this recessed space. So when you flip it on the right side and you push it into the corner, this 45 degree line marks exactly where the center is going to be. And then you just rotate it, slide it up into the corner again, and mark it. That gives you the exact center. If you wanted to double check yourself, you can slide this over again, and you can mark it, and you can see that is going to be the dead center every time. This is a great tool. It is fantastic to be able to use as a wood turner to find the center, and it can be used for all types of different things. Anytime you need to find the center of a circle, this is the tool that I'm going to be reaching for. I decided to go ahead and use the JTEC Photonic Laser and engrave my logo onto this center finder. Because this is going to be an integral part of the shop, this is going to be a very useful tool, and I wanted to be able to put the logo on it. And to do that, I just opened up the Lightburn software and pulled up the logo that I've used before. Now, I did have to make it just slightly smaller, but that was no big deal at all. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.